So hello from Green Mopeds in London. So today we're taking out uh, a bike that's forthcoming into the UK in uh, probably about four to six weeks and it is the Horwin SK3. Okay, so um, another interesting bike in various ways and we'll uh, talk about that as we ride along. Um, Horwin have been here for a good few years now. Uh, they are known for their CR6 motorbike, um, their EK1 and EK3 mopeds, although the EK3 is a 125cc license. And uh, the CR6 Pro, which um, has sort of uh, been and gone, I guess, for this year at least, uh, that was a, uh, a pseudo manual electric motorbike. Um, a bike that had gears, but you didn't have to use them, I guess is <laughs> one way of putting it. But anyway, um, so this is their next model, and from the outset, this is fairly and squarely aimed at Super Soco CPX people. Um, there's many similarities. Uh, in terms of size, um, if you think of something like an NMAX, petrol and max says um, you won't go too far wrong so in the Horwin lineup if we just talk about the 125ccs which this one is there is the EK3 that they do okay which 6.2 kilowatt mid mounted uh, chain driven 60 mile an hour bike with a 72 volt 40 amp hour battery okay uh, on 14 inch wheel at the front, 13 inch wheel at the back, and uh, sim uh, interestingly, similar in weight, um, but smaller all around. I mean, you can see here the sort of uh, space we've got. We'll do a static review, obviously, so you'll, you'll see. Uh, but this is bigger. This is, uh, you know, you, if, when we do it, we'll put it next to a CPX as well. Um, and you'll see how similar they are, other than the fact that the CPX has a 16-inch front wheel, um, whereas this one is on 14-inch front and back. Okay, so 14-inch wheels you'll see on the likes of uh, NIU, for example. Most of their bikes now are 14-inch wheel. Um, but this one is, as I say, really aimed at that bike, the CPX. Okay, um, as I'm sure a lot of you know, the sort of delivery market in the UK has been sort of dominated. Um, if you're not going for a sort of like a 28 mile an hour bike, um, it's been sort of dominated by the CPX and uh, a bit of NIU thrown in, I suppose. Um, Hallwin have got some fleets up in um, Just Eat, uh, but most of the sort of the Getteers of the world, um, Stuart, are using a CPX. So this is, I guess, Horwin's way at uh, trying to fix that. Okay, um, And they've done so in some interesting ways. So if you talk about, for example, the uh, length of the bike. So it is 10 centimetres, I think, shorter than a CPX but the CPX has a rack built in. So obviously when you put the rack on the back of this, this is probably gonna be a bit longer. Um, it is lighter than a CPX. Interestingly, it's about the same weight as the EK3, but bigger physically. Okay, so it's 94 kilos, I think it is, and an EK3 is 92 kilos. Um, the batteries are weighing about 18 kilos in that uh, weight, okay. Um, the uh, CPX is a little bit heavier, uh, 100 and I think it is 7 kilos um, with a battery that weighs about the same, okay. So there's, there's a lot of similarities and a, a few deltas. Um, as we're sort of going slowly, uh, a new dashboard layout from, they haven't taken, like a lot of people do, uh, just 
nicked bits off other bikes and uh, used them. This dash, I have to say, looks remarkably similar to a dash that you see on a bike from a brand called Lueng, L-V-E-N-G. But um, here you can see very clear, if you had the second battery, it would be down there. Um, and then you've got, you know, normal stuff. You can switch it to kilometers if you wanted to, so it's already built for all of that. Uh, you've got, you know, standard stuff here. Um, three modes, um, a flasher and light on this cluster here, and then indicators, uh, which do make noise. Um, and I've managed to change that noise. I'm not sure if I was meant to do that. But um, you'll hear it as I go along. It's, uh, it's not the click from the, the other Hallwind bikes, which um, it was actually when I <laughs> first started. It's now making a different noise, but maybe it's an option, or maybe I've just done something. Okay, uh, note, a little screen. CPX obviously comes with a big screen uh, as standard. So in some respects, the CPX has got a few things going for it, like the big screen and the rack by default, whereas this you'd have to add both of those things. Um, but as you see, you know, a lot of space for your feet. There's a cubby hole there. Um, inside, you've got your USB port, things like that, back hook. Uh, there is storage in a similar way to, in fact, the CPX and the EK3. The storage is the shape of the battery, okay? Um, I tried to get my helmet into that space, but it didn't work. Um, but I've got um, full face, so uh, that might be why. Um, open face, you probably will get an open face helmet in it. But uh, anything bigger, you will almost certainly want uh, a, a rack anyway. Okay. Um, in terms of performance and uh, motors and all that. So the EK3 has a 6.2 kilowatt motor, as does this. That's maximum power. Um, the CPX, on the other hand, has a uh, 4.5 kilowatt uh, maximum power motor. However, one of the big differences between the two, I or three, is that the hall winds are both mid-mounted with a chain and the CPX is hub mounted on a single swing arm. Okay. Um, what is quite interesting about this one versus the EK3 is that on an EK3 and typically on belt, uh, chain driven bikes, you do hear the chain or you hear noise from the motor because of the chain. Um, it is not making that much noise. Uh, in fact, maybe when we get faster, you'll see, but um, it's pretty silent for a chain-driven bike. Uh, just as we're riding along, here you can see mode 1, maximum speed 27. And then we'll see what uh, mode 2 gives us. Okay. All right, so... 6.2 kilowatts, just like the EK3. CPX, less, but on a hub motor. So more efficient or more of that energy from the batteries go to the motor on a CPX. Um, and therefore, the performance of chain-driven bikes, especially when you start off, is, um, I'm not sure if sluggish is the right word, but it's not as instant as on a hub-driven bike. Okay, and that is one of the things that I have noticed about this bike is it's not shooting off the line like you might expect. And we'll do our speed test uh, as we uh, go down the A3. Okay, um, so I guess if you were to do a zero to 50, let's say, comparison between all three bikes, the CPX might win it, even though it's only got a 4.5 kilowatt motor versus this 6.3 kilowatt. Okay. Um, not sure if you'll be buying the bikes because of that reason, but uh, it's just to let you know. Okay. Um, then let's talk about batteries. So, oh, sorry, just before that. Um, top speed. So the EK3 top speed is 
over 60. Um, and the, but the top speed of this one is 56, which happens to be identical to the CPX. Okay. Um, not too sure why it's not 60 like the EK3 when it's same powered motor, although a different rated battery, but still 72 volt. But um, maybe they've uh, decided that 56 is like the optimal speed or they just wanted to make it a direct competitor to a uh, CPX. But anyway, 56 miles an hour is its top speed. Um, then we've come to batteries. Uh, it is a little bit different again. So we've talked many times about batteries versus amp hours. Um, the uh, CPX is 60 volt. And as we said, normally you get better acceleration from 72 volt bikes. Um, but they would have to be equal, as in they'd both have to be hub or they'd both have to be chain. Um, so these are 72 volt. And the EK3 is 72 volt as well. But the EK3 you can have in uh, two different versions, but the one that everyone takes is the 40 amp hour version. 72 volt, 40 amp hours on an EK3. Uh, this one is 72 volt, 36 amp hour. And they are not interchangeable. Uh, the connectors are different. So you cannot put a 40 volt, sorry, 40 amp hour battery into this bike from the EK3 or the EK1. Um, not too sure on that, that decision uh, or why it's 36 amp hours and not 40. But just uh, more about that, as we've said before, amp hours determine range or amp hours in combination with volts determine range. Okay, so if you do the maths, 60 by 45 um, is a, actually a little bit more than 72 by 36. Okay, so it's about 2.6 kilowatt hours on this bike, and it's about 2.7 kilowatt hours on a CPX. Okay, so again, if all things were equal, purely on paper, the CPX would have just a little bit, not much, but a little bit more range. Okay, purely on maths. So as we're now on a 50, so top speed in mode two is 40, 42, 39, 40, something like that. Okay, so mode three, we should now get over 50, which we'll do when the road allows. Oh, the road allows. <laughs> so we'll get to 50. All right, so yes, yeah, so on paper, the CPX would have more range. I mean, the quoted range on this bike is 50 miles. Um, I'm not sure you will get that in reality. Um, what I can tell you is on an EK3, which has a 72 volt 40 amp hour battery, which of course is literally 10% more than this one. Um, we've got about 40 miles out of it when you're doing this sort of riding, okay? So bearing in mind, this bike has a 36 amp hour battery and not a 40 amp hour battery. Again, if you're doing this sort of riding, I doubt you're gonna get much over 40, if you get 40, okay? Of course, these bikes can have two batteries. The CPX EK3, they can all have two batteries. So, uh, if that's what you want to do. Uh, and one of the differences, one of the changes over an EK3 and the SK3 is that this one, um, either very shortly or as it comes into the UK, will actually have two battery leads like a CPX. The EK3 only has one battery lead and therefore you have to physically swap over the cables. Okay, so um, that is something, uh, a good sort of upgrade to the SK3. Okay. Um, charging time, the all important charging time, they are saying uh, four to four and a half hours. Okay, um, on the uh, CPX, it's three and a half hours. Uh, that's, I 
think we could, well, actually, I think they've got the same rated charger. So again, I'm not too sure why that would be so much different, um, especially com com uh, if you think of the capacity. But anyway, that's what they say, 4.5 hours. Um, and as you can see, I mean, there's obviously a lot of wind because I'm going quite fast, but on an EK3, I think you would still hear the bike right now. And on this bike, not hearing the motor at all. Uh, so they've done a good job in making it, you know, not losing um, uh, power to uh, things like noise and friction, I guess. So uh, obviously a good thing. Um, the only other bike that I've had that's belt driven uh, that, uh, or chain driven, that doesn't make any noise is actually the uh, Lexmoto Cypher which you wouldn't know it's got a belt on it at all. It might as well be uh, up. Okay, so 6.2 kilowatts, 56 miles an hour, quoted 50 mile range. I'm thinking more like 40 from a single battery, but you can buy a second 72 volt, 36 amp hour battery for it. Okay. Um, in terms of colors so uh, three colors one is um, a sort of goldy um, champagne sort of color I guess then there's a blue and a uh, this one which is actually a sort of anthracite but looks fairly black um, knows your choices on that um, it is on the grant just like uh, the others the Hallwin and uh, the CPX um, so you get your three-year warranty on the battery and your uh, two-year warranty on the bike. Okay. Uh, one of the things that I think, as I said, as this is aimed fairly and squarely at the CPX people, is the price. So a Super Soccer CPX with one battery is basically 3,800. Okay, this one with one battery is 3,349. Okay, so, uh, well, can't deny it, it's a significant 400 odd pound saving over a CPX. Okay, what's actually now interesting is the price of an EK3. The EK3 is 4,099 which now looks a bit expensive compared to this one. And of course, I guess the question would be, why would you choose one over the other? I mean, the, the, the EK3 compared to this one, it's lower down, uh, as I said, 13 inch wheel at the back, 14 at the front, whereas this is both 14. Uh, it's smaller, uh, similar storage, um, makes more noise but goes a little bit faster so it goes let's say it goes five miles an hour faster um, similar range everything else is similar no app uh, got an alarm all that sort of stuff so your question would be is it worth 700 pounds more to go 60 rather than 55 okay so that's maybe one of your questions to ask okay uh, and with a slight also caveat that uh, you can't charge both batteries at the same time. Okay, so something else to think about. Okay, but I guess th they're not necessarily thinking of that. They are thinking of, can I buy this rather than a Super Soco CPX, which is what they're going for. Let's say, okay, you have to add on the rack, 100 odd pounds, screen maybe although that's maybe not a big thing um, hundred odd pounds so you're talking three five fifty let's say versus three eight so you're still even if you add on those things 250 pounds less for this bike okay so it's definitely worth uh, considering and uh, also comparing to both of those bikes, EK3 and an SK3. I mean, you could, if you wanted to, add in something like uh, an NIU 
uh, MQI GT45, which, uh, as its name suggests, only does 45 miles an hour. And with both batteries, both batteries, because it comes with two, you're looking at only about 50 miles. So again, uh, slower, uh, a little bit cheaper, but doesn't do the range and doesn't do the speed. So, um, but you might consider it, okay. So what we're gonna do, as we usually do, is uh, we will find a place to stop and bear in mind I've now used half the battery. Uh, we will do our zero to top test and uh, stick times up and uh, then wrap up. Okay, back okay in so a here we are pulled over, um, just to show you the dash again to make it clear. So you've got single battery. If you had a second battery, that would be down there. That's your total mileage done. That's your trip. On this side, we've got reverse, interestingly. Um, and then we've got our three modes. Uh, turning on and off the uh, full beam, because it's got running lights. Um, and then down here, you've got horn uh, and hazard lights. Uh, no cruise control like the EK3 has. Um, but, you know, that's not a reason to buy a bike or not, I guess. Um, so you've got a cubby hole in here, uh, bag hook, quite a lot of floor space. Um, and then, interestingly, how you can start this bike, there are actually three ways of starting this bike. Uh, there is the uh, key, as in turn the key, put it in. There is the uh, proximity, where you can turn it on because the fob, the alarm fob is in proximity to the actual bike. So you're still using this, but the fob is enabling you to use that. Uh, and then you've got the fob itself. So three ways. Uh, one of the things that we do tell people is um, basically pick a way and stick to it, as in do not combine methods. Uh, because that's how the bike can get confused, okay? But um, what we do is we will do zero to top um, and then we'll put the times up later just as normal. Okay, so uh, just wait for a break in the traffic and then we'll do that. And you'll hear the indicator, which, uh, as I said, I've managed to change the sound. All right, so uh, let's go. So as you see, the initial take up the first that was 30 that didn't set the world alight that's 40 and that's 50 okay so I don't know why it is that they've that the BMS or the controller is set that the initial first 10 miles an hour is fairly sluggish but it seems to me that that is the way it is on this bike it seems different to the ek3 okay uh, for whatever reason that's the, just the way they've chosen to do it okay so uh, anyway that's how it gets there and you can see now cruising along at 53 no issues maybe having a screen at this point would be better but um, I have to say, I do feel we are chomp chomping through this battery fairly quickly, considering uh, this was 100% charged when we started this morning, and it was at, I think it was at three miles uh, total trip. So uh, we're looking less than uh, 40 miles for sure. Okay. Anyway, um, I'll come back. Um, when we come off here and uh, wrap up and then um, hope that help you in your uh, research. Okay, so back on quieter roads. Um, so you can see I've gone through a fair chunk of this battery now, 75% since I uh, set off this morning. Um, but of course, obviously the uh, second battery option is there. Um, but it is interesting that uh, they had the option, or maybe they didn't have the option, but building this bike to take a 40 amp hour battery, as in the same ones uh, as the EK3, perhaps these batteries come from a different supplier. Maybe that's what it is. Um, but anyway, if you had the second battery, let's say you're going to get 65, 60 out of it, something like that. Um, I mean, once it gets going, 
it's fine. It, the I do feel it's a little bit sluggish to start with, and uh, again, not sure why that is. It might be the effect of having a chain. Uh, I'm surprised by the chain that it's so quiet. I have to say, you you could uh, be excused for thinking that it's belt, if not hub itself, because it's so quiet. Um, it's certainly bigger than um, an EK3. Certainly got more room than an EK3. It's definitely com a competitor to a CPX. With that, as I said, even if you add the screen and the rack, you're still 250 pounds less um, than a CPX single battery. And I think it's even more if you go for the dual battery option, uh, as in it's even a, a bigger uh, difference. Um, it doesn't have an app. I guess that would be one thing that a CPX has. Although um, we've started fitting a lot of uh, GPS units to bikes, which of course you then get the tracking, which is the most important part. Okay. Um, th the start of it, you know, fairly uh, straight line based, unlike the EK3 with its sort of uh, angular sort of design. Um, but that's just personal choice. Uh, so all in all, um, an interesting lineup to the Horwin uh, range, um, but it is interesting that it's 3349 compared to an EK3 at 4099, which will give you a little bit more miles and a little bit more speed, but not a lot. Okay. All right. So uh, hopefully that's helped. Um, as I said, this bike will be available probably in October by the time uh, it gets over here and sorted out into dealers. Um, if you uh, would like to pre-order, which might be advisable as they, uh, a lot of them will come and go straight to dealers. So if you do want one, it might be advisable to pre-order it, uh, which you can do on our website. And um, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, Green Dash Mopeds, to follow us with these sorts of reviews. And happy to take any questions either through there or all the many other ways of communicating these days. And um, thanks very much.